Welcome back to Switch to Linux. My voice is still not 100% back, but we're going to give it a try. Uh, today we're going to talk about why are these the top distros? And uh, I got to thinking about this when this is the video that I kind of wanted to do uh, when I was over at camp, but uh, didn't get the chance. Um, it was much busier uh, in the position I was holding this week than I had the last week. Um, but if you go on over to Distro Watch, and of course, the distros and the top distro risks, these simply are the distros that are showing up by hits, people coming over and searching for them. Uh, there's ways to game the systems and things like this. This is not the best overarching tool. And many people complain that DistroWatch looks like the website was vomited out of the 1990s has never changed. With this assessment as a web developer, I must agree. But hey, it's working for them. It has the information. It's organized. Why bother changing it? Frankly, I don't care if it looks like it's out of the 90s. It functions. But what I want to do is I want to have a look at the top five distros. Because for quite a while now, these top five distros have remained the top five distros. MX Linux, Endeavor OS, Linux Mint, Manjaro, and Pop OS. And what we want to do today is I want to talk about why are these the top distros and have been for a long time. Now, are these absolutely the best? No, not necessarily. I'm not saying that anyway. Um, four of these five I use in regular production right now. The fifth one I actually have installed on a gaming hard drive for, it's either Steam or Wine, um, but I, you know, I don't play video games much, so technically I have it. So I actually have all five of these distributions in my production flow right now. And I want to talk a little bit about what led me to these and why they seem to work, why a lot of people seem to use them, why they got a lot of hits on DistroWatch. And a lot of it is has to do with the fact that these distros, they're not just themes of something else. They are their own thing based on the separate tools and separate functions. So let's go ahead and break down into these guys. First, MX Linux. MX Linux is based on Debian, and it is a distro which they want to make Debian very much more functional, kind of like Ubuntu, only they're doing it without the implementation of a lot of non-free software, although I think they have some options for that. They do have a system D free version of it, which you can use. There is their primary one. They use a modified XFCE. However, they do have a KDE build as well, as long as you are willing to run a slightly different kernel. And I forget is it the Zen kernel? It's, there's a few different kernels. It's the kernel that you use for later, uh, latest hardware. Um, MX Linux, though, also contains a lot of really good tools. You can install other desktop environments. They have their own software uh, repository system. They're their own software installation tool, which is very easy to use. You can very easily click of a button, enable backports. You can click of a button, enable flat packs. MX Linux is very good. It is lightweight, solid, based on Debian. They don't focus on a ton of different desktop environments, although you can install the other ones, but they have a suite of tools which are really good, including things that you can modify your, your MX build and then export it to install that modified version across the entire work, uh, workplace. So if you wanted to do a modified Linux distribution easily deployed across a variety of different computers, MX Linux is a good choice. The easy access to the back ports and the other features makes MX Linux a really good option. And that is, in my opinion, why it's in the top five list. Number two is Endeavor OS. The Endeavor OS is what I run. And by the way, I run MX Linux on my writing computer. I write my books on MX Linux. Endeavor OS I install on my media PC. This is my general all-purpose low-grade PC. I watch video with it. I'll do basic email. I'll do basic internet searches. All the general things you might use a computer for that's not part of extreme graphic build or video production 
uh, workflows. I run Endeavor OS, and I wanted to run some form of Arch system on that. So as packages roll up, I get a little bit of experience with the latest versions of packages. So when I'm ready to roll my production systems, I'm not caught off by surprise by little small changes. I can catch those a little bit as they roll out in that. Now, Endeavor OS is one of those based on Arch. It's very close to Arch. It's not like Manjaro, which is kind of like a lot of modifications to the packages in Arch. But with Endeavor OS, they also have a few extra suite of tools. Uh, they have a uh, they have a, a way to check for updates. They have a way you can easily switch your kernel. There's a few GUI tools that that solve a few of those problems that make Arch a little bit more difficult to run. Now, I thought Arco Linux was going to take up as a supreme uh, ruler of the Arch world because for a while it was generating a ton of buzz. I think they probably fell under the uh, uh, enormity of the project. Um, I'm sure it's probably still on the top 100. Yeah, it's 19 on DistroWatch's list. It is very good, particularly if you want to learn the ins and outs, because Arco allowed you to start with where you are and to build up to more experience. If you're wanting to learn a lot more about the back end of Linux, Arco is a good way to go. But in reality, that's not most people. Most people are like, I need a good Linux distribution that I can run. Endeavor OS is one of the easiest installers to use. XFCE by default fault, but you can install and customize your build through an easy set of GUI menus, which is a lot easier than Arch 5 scripts or installing Arch uh, manually. And it had a lot more features and functions than Arco, uh, Arch Labs, which is what I used prior to using Endeavor OS, and a few of the other ones. Now, there is another one that is uh, coming up, and uh, I think it is, uh, I think it's Garuda Linux. is another one that's rising in the lists, so it wouldn't surprise me if Garuda might overtake Endeavor eventually as that top um, really close to pure Arch build. But Endeavor OS does have the extra GUI tools making it a really good and really easy way to install and manage Arch. Probably the only thing that they could do to improve it is to install Pumic on it by default, which is what I have done on my personal uh, Endeavor OS build. Uh, number three on their list is Linux Mint. This is my classic, absolute favorite Linux distribution. It's basically an Ubuntu, which is more catered towards people who do not like the GNOME background, the GNOME desktop environment, which has hurt Ubuntu a couple of times. It hurt Ubuntu when they moved from GNOME to Unity, and it hurt Ubuntu again when they went from a new, uh, Unity back to GNOME. But a lot of people still like the old, classical, traditional way of running a desktop I know I am, and a lot of people in my generation prefer that over GNOME. The younger generation does prefer that GNOME, but what Linux Mint did is developed a uh, the Cinnamon desktop, which was based on GNOME, which is a very modern, very easy to use, integrates with online accounts, integrates with your calendars, all of these core functions in a modern desktop with the classic traditional build, what's very stable, very easy to edit, very easy to use. They also have good theming options and a few other, uh, the X app tools, which are the Linux Mint tools. They have USB writers, drivers, uh, and just a few other functions making Linux Mint work on the widest spectrum of hardware with a lot of the best overall options. That is why I like Linux Mint. It's downside, of course, and the thing that's hurting Mint right now is that more and more distros are moving away from Ubuntu build, kind of like uh, Peppermint going from Ubuntu back to Debian, taking a step back to redirection itself in what I think ultimately is going to be a better direction, although it's in a period of time uh, flex right now. Now, that being said, Linux Mint, um, it, it, they have a Debian build. LMDE is the Linux Mint Debian edition. The problem with that is it lags behind the development of Debian. Debian is already slow, and Linux Mint Debian edition oftentimes is several months after the latest release of Debian because they focus a lot of their time on the Ubuntu build. The problem is the Ubuntu build is becoming a patchwork of nonsense as they're trying to rip core packages out to push everything through snaps, which Linux Mint takes a stand against. What is happening is the core of Ubuntu is becoming more and more unstable as they rely more on 
on snaps to get their system working, which doesn't generally work super well. So the latest few versions of Ubuntu, uh, of Linux Mint have been problematic because the core of Ubuntu without snaps is starting to degrade. And Linux Mint is being hurt by this. And if they turned a little bit more focus on Linux Mint Debian Edition as their primary with the Ubuntu Edition as their secondary, they would probably recapture themselves back in the build because they are in the best position right now to move from uh, from the Ubuntu core to the Debian core. But still, it is on the list because it is really good. And it's the only one that's actually on the rise on the list right now. The other one's falling. Of course, that's probably because the latest version, Linux Mint 21, uh, has just been released in, uh, in their, their release circles. Linux Mint overall, it still is my favorite. However, I think that um, in my next build, I will be going to the LMDE uh, just because the the instability, I'm starting to see some of those instability things, which I believe are coming from the Ubuntu package base. Number four is Manjaro. I run Manjaro on my work computer on the ARM build on Raspberry Pi. So my web design work uh, is all done on Manjaro. And I would like to probably do Manjaro XFCE instead of right now I'm on Manjaro Plasma and on a Raspberry Pi. It lags a little bit more than it used to. And so if I, it might be about time to maybe get a new SD card, new USB drive, refresh uh, the distro from scratch and just port my home folder over, uh, not lose anything in that way. That might be uh, a way to refresh in the system. If I do that, I go to back to XFCE. Now, Manjaro is based on Arch, but it is kind of like Ubuntu in that it's based on Debian, but it's highly modified. So Manjaro will hold back packages much later than Arch. Arch is definitely bleeding edge. Manjaro is more bleeding edge than Ubuntu, but it is it still does hold packages back. They do some modifications. They test some things. Manjaro has had a little bit of negativity over some years, with particularly some uh, larger uh, Linux YouTubers, and that it sometimes had a tendency to, to blow up on itself. I have never had that personal problem, uh, but some people... People have and a lot of people with a lot of credibility and knowledge in the Linux community have had that so it's not probably not simple user error it simply is the fact that yeah there's maybe a few things that they've done a little bit goofy they have had a few little bumps in the road and the one time they were gonna force a not FOSS um, Office tool instead of LibreOffice that caused a lot of pushback and now you have the option no office suite LibreOffice or I think it's SoftMaker um, Whichever one it is, I, I forget exactly which which one it is. One of the selling points of Manjaro, though, is they do have a lot of extra functional tools uh, inside of their systems. Uh, and it is also, in addition to Linux Mint, one of the most beautiful Linux distributions out of the box. If you're going pure Arch, pure Debian, uh, you install your random whatever desktop environment. Pretty much every desktop environment except for... Um, uh, Plasma and Budgie by default are ugly as sin. <laughs> and um, that's one of those things. Manjaro is one of those distros. They put a lot of time fine tuning the themes. And you actually find that in all of these, with the exception of Endeavor OS, Min MX Linux, Manjaro, Mint, and Pop OS have all done things in their themes which make them gorgeous. And that maybe is one of those things. And there's going to be two things that stand out. We'll talk about it at the very end. But Manjaro, it looks good. It has a wide variety of desktop environments natively. They have the ARM builds. Uh, I think they have unofficial 32-bit builds, although those might have dropped by now. I, I can't remember. But you can get any form of desktop environment and several window managers built already on top of Manjaro if you would like. It is very good. It is very beautiful. The tools make it easy to manage. And they are the ones that really popularize Pomac inside of uh, inside of, of Arch. So you can do your your Pac-Man inside of in your terminal, but Pomac is a good GUI interface for Pac-Man. The other thing Manjaro does really well is they inside of Pomac there are simple toggle switches. If you like flat packs and want to use them, you toggle it on and they'll appear in your searches. You toggle it off and they don't. They have the same function for Snap. You toggle it on 
and you will have snap packages show up in your system. You toggle it off and they completely disappear. I think they manage it the best. I'm against snaps, but I recognize a lot of people do like them. I think Pamuk did that, did that the best with Manjaro and that you can turn it on or turn it off. I think that that's the best approach because even though I hate snaps, you might like them and having a tool like Manjaro that's easy as a toggle button is really good. And the last one on the list is Pop OS. With Pop OS, uh, what we see on this one is it is based on GNOME and it is becoming highly modified to the point where it will probably branch off to its own thing. There is a little bit of feuding going on between Pop OS team and GNOME that I am I've heard rumblings of, but I've not looked into personally. One of the cool things that Pop! OS does is it is based on Ubuntu, but they have put in a lot of the extra developer tools. So all the, the back-end obscure packages that I know nothing about that uh, high-level developers would need is already implemented into Pop! OS. That means uh, under-the-hood sy system bloat for those that don't use any of those things. But for people who do, it means it's a desktop or uh, uh, it's a Linux distribution that works really well. Um, for them without monkeying around with it. The other thing that they've done is they have put in a toggle switch to allow you to do basically run GNOME like a window manager um, uh, or run GNOME as a full desktop environment. So you can toggle back and forth between uh, tiling window manager or not. And then they have a few other tools. Uh, they have their own uh, software storage, I believe is based on the elementary OS uh, software store, which is one of the best things that elementary OS has done is how they manage uh, their, their store. It just has a really good GUI uh, to it. Um, but overall, Pop! OS works really well out of the box. It's also is one of the uh, one of the few Ubuntu based distri distributions that has easy settings to upgrade your firmware as well. That's something that is more rare in the Linux world. But the firmware is now something inside of there. Of course, Pop! OS is created by System76. So if you're wanting to buy a computer with a good Linux distribution on it, System76 can sell you those computers. I uh, know this is not sponsored. I have never looked at a System76 computer before, so I don't know if they're good or not. I hear they're really good, but I haven't looked at them. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, so that is kind of my list about why are these the top Linux distros? What are the overarching things that we see? Number one, we see distributions that have a lot of different options. Um, they they have tools inside of them. That's number two. Tools inside of them that just make managing everything really well and easy. You're not going online and figuring out how to do something in a terminal. Every one of these things, every one of these OSs have good tools to make some of the backend management a lot easier. Um, number three is they are all geared towards... Uh, towards a, a user aesthetically, except maybe Endeavor OS, uh, because nothing in Arch looks beautiful out of the box. Um, but um, all of these guys have put a lot into theming their desktop to look really good. MX Linux is beautiful out of the box. Linux Mint is beautiful out of the box. Manjaro is beautiful out of the box. Pop OS, well, it's they've done the best that they can, being the fact you can't really modify a lot of the theming with GNOME easily. But they have done some things to do that. Uh, Dever OS, hey, you can install some themes and whatnot, whatever desktop environment you're using. Uh, but all of these also make it easy to add extra desktop environments. Pop OS has good documentation on that. Manjaro, you can easily use whichever one. Linux Mint is one of the exceptions. They only have three, but I have done videos about installing Budgie and Plasma and other uh, GNOME, other things on top of them. MX Linux, it's very easy and in, uh, button inside the system to install them. So all of these, I think, are in the top five uh, Linux distributions on DistroWatch because they are bringing a wide use of hardware. They're bringing very good aesthetics. They're bringing extra tools to make management easy. And all of them tend to have really good track records. So those are why I consider these the top five distributions. Uh, if you have other things to add, please add those to the comments down below. Thanks for watching. A reminder too, we are also putting all of our videos um, are also on Odyssey Library. We are also putting them all out on Rumble and we are putting them all out on BitChute. So if you do not want to watch on YouTube, you can check out those uh, other channels over there. Well, thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. 
you can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.